With more and more movies easily available on streaming services, it's harder to know what's worth watching and what might be a waste of your time. There are many hidden gems out there waiting to be discovered, and we want to help you find them. This is Trailer Rewind, a podcast where JJ and I, your virtual video store clerks, sift through the shelves to help you discover new favorites. Today is October 19th, 2021, and If Beale Street Could Talk is available to stream on Hulu. Now, because what's available on streaming services can change, it's possible that by the time you are listening to this show, that Beale Street is no longer available on Hulu. But you can easily find where it is available using a service like JustWatch.com. Or if you're on Letterboxd and have a patron or pro account, JustWatch is actually integrated into your account. So when you look at the Trailer Rewind watch list or Trailer Rewind episode list, you can easily see where a film is currently available. If you don't have a patron or pro Letterboxd account, you can get a 20% discount at TrueStory.fm slash Letterboxd. So let's take a look at the trailer to see what If Beale Street could talk is all about. You ready for this? I've never been more ready for anything in my whole life. You know I love you. No matter what happens. I'm yours in your mind and that's it. You want me all the time. Drinking to new life. Tish gonna have Fonny's baby. <laughs> I hope it's a boy. <laughs> Come on over here, daughter. You're a good girl, and I'm proud of you. Don't you ever forget it. And who's gonna be responsible for this baby? The father and the mother. When I hold you in my arms, I gotta hold our baby in my arms. We'll find a way. That child was born of sin. That child. It's your grandchild. What difference does it make how it gets here? Unbow your head, sister. We've known Bonnie all his life. He's about to pay for something he didn't do. These are our children, and we gotta set them free. Remember, love is what brought you here. And if you trusted love this far, don't panic now. Trust it all the way. Just remember. Be on soon. JJ, did you watch the trailer before or after you watched the movie? After I watched the movie, and I think what's remarkable about the trailer to me is it feels like a direct representation of what you see in the film. It doesn't get deeply into the story, but we're going to talk about that a little bit when we talk about this movie here in that what it does really well in the trailer is through the use of the actual film music delivers the emotion of the film in a very tight small snippet. So you're going to know right away from seeing that trailer how you're going to feel and how you're going to be engaged in the film. So, And it gives you a little bit of what's happening. It, it's enough to tell you what's going to happen in the story, but it doesn't reveal too much and it immediately takes you on the emotional ride that you're going to be going through for the entire scene, the, the entire show of If, if Beale Street Could Talk. Yeah, I, I remembered seeing the trailer what was it like three years ago before this film came out sure. and just really being yeah. enthralled with the, the look of the trailer. And after watching the film, seeing how accurately it captured that, it wasn't a case of, oh, we're going to take all our, all the best, you know, visual moments of the film and put them in the trailer. It's a consistent look and feel throughout the film. And it really captures yeah. that, that mood, that feel to that. Uh, you get really compacted. And you know, I think all of the elements that you're going to encounter, I mean, some of the things that stand out in the trailer are just the, it's just the warm tones. It has that, the, the, the colors, colors, the colors yeah, are so bold. Yes. Yeah. The, the music and then just those use of the, you know, sort of tight, you know, straight on 
shots of our of our characters and we see that throughout the film and it it does it gives you everything that you're going to experience in this film without giving away too much of the story so if if you watch that trailer and say oh this looks very interesting i'm really drawn to the look and style of this trailer i think you're going to really appreciate and enjoy the film and then once we start talking about story we can talk about what else is in there yeah exactly yeah it's intense art and it's delivered in the trailer as well it's it is in it's intense art but it's not art that presents itself as i don't want to say an opposition or a barrier or or demands a lot of work of the audience uh where some films can be arty they can be harder to access it's going to be very demanding to to think through what what's going on or it's obscuring meaning but this is just I guess I would say, um, what is the, I'm trying to draw into my art history, uh, Rococo, which is like beauty for beauty's sake. Uh, but it, it's, you know, it it's not superficial. It just really grounds the film, uh, I think, in that era of, of everything. Yeah, I think yeah. you're using superficial with a negative connotation there. But I think that the interesting thing about this is that superficially the film is fantastic it, its superficial qualities are excellent and it marries it with a very effective uh, storytelling and the reason why i want to say that is because it, it, it doesn't feel like it's going to be art that's not easy for everyone to understand however for people who are traditional movie viewers it isn't necessarily a, a completely linear story and it doesn't have a traditional story arc in that you're not going to understand the story a, as it's told it's not laid out for you in this way that's very simple and that's why it feels artful because it feels like a bunch of different crises that are delivered over the course of a line with the purpose of delivering the art of the emotion and that sort of beautiful superficial way too and that's why i really consider it this kind of intense art piece um but like you said, it is accessible. It is something that it, the message is not obscured. The message is is very, uh, uh, it, it's literal, literal. You can gather what's happening by what's here. And so you're not going to be confused by the story, but it's not the same of what, uh, you know, sort of a traditional uh, blockbuster popcorn film is going to be made right. of. Exactly. And this film came out in the, in the holiday season. And uh, that typically is when a lot of, Oscar contenders are released. And uh, within the past year, there have been several conversations over on Discord within the Next Real community about movies that are considered Oscar bait. And and what exactly does that mean? And this is a film where I think some people could look at that and say, oh, that's Oscar bait. And then, you know, well, what does that mean exactly? I mean, does this film feel like a film that would be considered Oscar bait or what what do you consider Oscar bait to be in would this be in that category? So I'm going to say yes, but I think when we hear those conversations on Discord, we're again doing that with a negative connotation. We're trying to say that, oh, maybe this film doesn't deserve an Oscar. They just placed it at the time to do it. But I disagree. I think it is Oscar worthy. And I think it is Oscar bait. I think you place it in that pl- in in that time frame so that the right people can see it and consider it for the awards that it deserves because of the nature of everything that we just talked about, right? So this concept of having this intense high art delivered in an accessible format with a social justice message. I mean, it's it's very powerful on all those levels. So yes, they placed it there. And yes, it belongs with the other movies that you're considering. It's for your consideration, right? We, we release the movie so that it can be considered with the other Oscar movies. And I think when people have that conversation about Oscar bait, they're trying to discredit, you know, what's there in terms of in terms of the art versus the promotion. But I think that ultimately for a movie like this, you do release it at this time so that it gets the buzz that it's worthy of. And so, I, uh, yeah, I, it's a, what, what do they call it? It's a affirmative defense yes. is what I'm giving it. <laughs> yeah. Yes, exactly. Because I, I think that, yeah, Oscar made it sometimes oh, this film was just put together solely for the purposes of of getting an Oscar. Right. Or certain people are cast for that that reason. Yeah. And, you know, or it's, it's a movie that's got an important message. And so we're getting a message film that, you know... All of that is you know, true. And, yeah. and all that is true. And so, I mean, we can, you know, briefly talk about the Oscars for this. And this is the film that uh, Regina King won a uh, an Oscar for Best Performance by an Actress in a Supporting Role. It was also nominated for Screenplay and Score. So it had those those yeah. three Oscar nominations. Did it win for score? No, it, it, it was it, it was just just nominated. 
for that. Oh, that's just yeah. yeah. It, the score is so remarkable in this movie. It is something that that is impossible to not be emote to to feel the emotion with the score in this movie. It is so powerful. I was really impressed by the score. Well, it's it's when I think about this movie, and I you know if we we can start to talk about story a, a little bit, but you know as we get into this, but I think that's something that's really important when we talk about the structure of the film or what this film is setting out to accomplish, because it is really just, a, I mean, it's straightforward drama. If I had to put this on a shelf, it's just going to go in the drama section because I think that's... Yeah, well, I think, it wasn't it last time that we talked about the, the concept of a social justice drama that we, you know, the, that in today's the, the, film world, we would create a shelf assign, that says social justice well, or drama. Or assignment cinema, right? It's something that you do assignments as, as you do yes, as homework. Exactly. But there's more to this. You see in there's, school. There's something, this one, yes, but I think there's, it's entertaining in the story is as well and i guess what i'm looking at is this film really feels like a book to me as we you talk about the nonlinear structure i feel like it's reading a book when you you finish this chapter so you you've got this part of the story now we're starting the next chapter we may move forward or backward in time we may shift which characters we're focusing on but it all it all works together it's not uh chopped up you know time to to disorient us to disguise anything it really feels like that stream of consciousness a little bit of a person telling a story and oh well let me remind you and i think that is that's a beautiful way to think of it yeah i think of it as something that contributes to that is is tish's you know voiceover she is really the narrator it's not just it's not voiceover i really feel like this is that author's voice that when you're reading a book you've got dialogue but then you have that that author's narrative voice that comes in and that's what tish's narrative voiceover feels like to me gives us a little bit of insight gives us some context to things can help set the tone uh, but really that's it to help guide us through the story yeah and i think the the word that i think of to describe all that as i was watching is that it's really impressionistic yes right oh, we yes. get this this feeling of i love the, the the sort of novelization idea that you put there and i think that it, you watch this movie and it is the impressions of a memory or the storytelling like you talked about. It's 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 done really well in that aspect. And that's why I consider it really high, intense art. OK, so if, if we put this in a shelf, if it's social justice, if it's it's drama, um, I mean, <laughs> yeah, Flick Chart actually called it as as crime drama. OK, there, and I was like, oh, there okay. is a crime I did, that's part of the there, story, there, but a, it's such a. Yeah, but it's. That's it's almost tangential yes. to the story. Yes. Crime, crime, it, it wouldn't fit with those with the other crime movies. No, this there, this sure. really is. I mean, what I think about if I have to describe this film to somebody, because if you watch the trailer, you don't have a strong sense of what's the overriding conflict or drama driving this story. And it, it's really a human story of two young adults and dealing with with family conflict and drama. Uh, I mean, that's what the the first full, I want to say about 40 minutes of this is. It is about Tish and Fani and their relationship and the impact that it has on their their parents and their siblings and all of that that's going on. And that's it's it's a story and a conflict that to me can take place with any family, just about anywhere in any era of time. Basically, there's nothing that I can say, oh, that's such a 70s thing. Uh, you know, th it really it felt universal about that. And then we get a sharp. Well, it is universal, but it is about the black. Well, experience. Yes, that's really yes. key to put that there, because, you know, that social just justice aspect about the message that it's delivering is specifically about the black experience and and it, what black the black community has to go through in relationship to law. Well, and, order. and that's the other part of the story. But if I'm just dealing with the families. That to me is is something that anybody can identify and it, it draws you in. And then at about minute 38, 39, we get a really sharp break. And then Tish just says, oh, let me tell you the story of this woman. And I'm like, what are we doing? And we're getting this well, this, this woman that's brought over, uh, you know, she's the mother of these kids. And then, you know, he leaves her and it's all this. And she's accusing, you know, Fani of, of rape. And we get all of now the really social political aspect of what's going on that, that balances that so we've got these these young adults that are struggling with a pregnancy and you know how their families are reacting to that and then we compound that with the fact of what it means to be black in america in this time and what the justice system how the justice system works the corruption and bias that is part of that and the fight that they have to take on there that really is going to force them to to grow up a lot faster and i'd say if that's really if i boil it down that's 
the essence of the story, but there's so much of how that is told that is really the beauty of this this film. Um, but I'd say that's there's it it is not a movie that is hitting you over the head with a message. It's not, you know, in your face. It's not didactic of like, this is how you need to feel. This is what you need to be thinking about this. Um, and that's one of the things that I think makes it such a powerful statement because it is really, here are these people. And this is the, this is what, this is their life. This is the, the conflicts that they're facing. And it gives you the opportunity to reflect on that and really have an, an emotional response to, to that piece. And to me, that's, this is a film like I want to recommend to everybody because I think it is so accessible. It is so beautiful in a way that is that is not going to feel artsy. I think it it will feel different from films that uh, that you've watched. You know, oh, this isn't as straightforward. Uh, yes, it is, but it's it's going to challenge you a little bit. If and I think you can pay attention, and if you're an intelligent adult, you can track where we are in, in points in time. And that, and there's some just gorgeous camera work in this, but it's not in a way that you're feeling, oh, this is so artsy. I don't know what's going on. It's really accessible in so many ways, but at a heightened level. And that's, I think, you know, Barry Jenkins, you know, the, the script of being able to adapt a novel, to create a compelling story, to to move things along, you know, brilliant. The, the cinematography, the score, all that all work together to really create... I just felt warm inside. <laughs> yeah, it was a Best Picture nomination, right? Did it get Best Picture nom? It did not get Best Picture nomination. Wow! Even in the group of ten, that's just just that's unfortunate. Yes. I think it should. I think it deserves. Oh, it it, it deserves yeah. a lot of things, and that's you know I think right. why we want to talk about it here because it's one that got overlooked. I feel I really feel like this is right. one that should have gotten more attention, and one that I encourage anybody to go. Go check out this film because I I just it's one of my favorites from this year because it it just works so well and it's just a warm comforting embrace is the best way I can describe sort of you know watching this this film about a really difficult topic <laughs> about a really difficult <laughs> yeah. topic yes exactly 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 so how how did you end up ranking rating I ended up ranking it really yeah. high. And I, I think, you know, it's it's I just really admire this movie. I think that's and, and like you're saying, you want to recommend it to everybody. It's one that everybody should see. I think, um, you know, during um, the George Floyd situation in 2020, there was a lot of uh, of things that were streaming and things that were out there. We talked about um, that. I think it was what is it? The 15th It talks about the amendment the 13th. That, that, yeah. that changed the, the 13th. Yes. Yeah, so that changed the, the, the way that our jail system worked. This one kind of belongs on that list. This is an artful way of looking at that kind of stuff. So for me, I, I, I ended up rank, ranking it really high. I gave it four stars. Um, and in my flick chart, it showed up as uh, 34 out of 269. And where that put it, it put it in a weird place. But I mean, it's it's above Looper, <laughs> which, <laughs> okay, yeah. I, I, of course, it would go above yeah. there for me. But then it's below uh, The Gentleman, okay. which I is, you know, I think is an underrated movie for, for Guy Ritchie but, uh, in my speed. But, you know, it's on the second page for me in flick chart. It, it's really highly ranked. And I think it's just, I just admire this movie so much. I don't know that I'm ever going to go back to it unless I want to show it to someone. It's the kind of thing of if you haven't seen it, I want to watch it with you so we can talk about it. But otherwise, um, I don't know that I'll watch it again. So it, it belongs up there 34 out of 269. How about okay, you, Steve? So for me, it ended up quite high as well at 105 of 797. And that put it in an interesting spot because it, it starts to once you get in that top near the top 100, when I've got a list of nearly 800, it's 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 bumping up against some really solid things. So it ended up just below um, Sicario, which is just I, I saw in the theater and was such just a powerful experience. And it's it's one that is one of my you know top films of all time. Um, just below that, uh, if I go down a couple spaces at 108 is Molly's Game, which we talked about on the film board, sure. you know, a few yep, years yep. ago. So it's it's in this mix of films that some of them that I will watch again, some of them that just really affected me and I probably don't need to to watch again. Uh, but I agree. If there's somebody that's over and they haven't seen this, I'm going to say we're going to we're going to watch this and I want to watch it with you so that, again, it is a great conversation starter, uh, but really in a non-confrontational way. So I, I end up giving it, you know, four stars and a heart over on Letterboxd because it it's just it does such a, gr a great job of everything it sets out to do. 
over on Letterboxd, it has an average review of 3.94 based on yeah, right 89,000 reviews. And over at IMDb, it has a rating of 7.1 based on 46,000 votes. So this is one where we have far more reviews on Letterboxd than IMDb. Usually the metrics are flipped the other way around. Uh, but I, More IMDb people need yes, to see this movie. Yes, that's they do. Uh, so, so that's our ratings. That's our recommendations on this. Is this a flick for you? Well, you can go check out If Beale Street Could Talk on Hulu. If you're still not sure, we are about to dive into a conversation. But before we spend time with Tish and Fani, we need to give credit where credit is due. Trailer Rewind is a member of the True Story FM Entertainment Network. Check out all of the great podcasts at truestory.fm. Our episodes are engineered by the wonderful Pete Bright, and our intro music is Duda by Ian Post. All right. We can dig into this one, JJ. What is yeah. this film trying to accomplish? How well does it do it? What what Well, you you reminded me of something because I was going to come to this conversation and talk just about social mm-hmm. justice and just about the sort of message that it was going to put out there, but you reminded me about how important the story is about family and about Tish and Fani as a couple. And and really I think what this film is trying to accomplish is is a marriage of those two things, is to show the stress and the resilience necessary to maintain humanness and, and coupling and a family through all of the terrible social justice wrongs that are sort of inflicted on this this on these people in this movie and i think um i think it does it and it's trying to do it in a way that is relatable it's accessible it's all those things there are some speeches in this movie that are hard to swallow especially if you're just like us and you know and burdened with white privilege which we are and you know that there is a whole conversation where they sit at the table and talk about how the white man is the devil and that's something you know that's james baldwin and that's and and that's something that if you are are not open to experiencing these th- these opinions and the negativity that is that is brought upon these characters that stuff's going to be hard for you but the reality is if you really take a time to, a chance to walk in these shoes that's what this film is about is making it accessible for you to feel the tragedy that's befallen these characters and that they have to do to just to have a human experience, to just get by. And I think the film's trying to accomplish it, and I think it does it beautifully. It, it, you're brought in emotionally through everything they do, both from a filmmaking perspective, from a tone perspective, and from, you know, the music just brings you there. Um, the drama is real. The intensity is real. And I think it, it just does everything that, uh, that I, I didn't expect it. I'll, I'll say that. I thought it was going to be something more lighthearted. Even with the title, I thought it was going to be more like Ma Rainey's Big Black Bottom. <laughs> but like the, the, reality, the reality is, I, after watching it, I think it was trying to accomplish a very serious thing in a very accessible way. And I think it does a great job of that. Well, it's, it, if we look at the beginning of this, I mean, we, we get Tish is our narrator. We've got, you know, Tish and Fani walking and then, we, you know, we've got her visiting him in prison with the reveal that she's pregnant and then having to go back and then talk to her family and then her family's reaction and, the, you know, how they're going to rally around her and really be supportive. And then, hey, we need to bring Fani's family over. We need to let them know what's going on. And then how that just there's so much friction and tension and that scene when you get the families together and the dynamics within Fani's family between his mother and father and all of that just was, it was like watching a play. I mean, it was, it's, we were yeah. just in the living room with them and we are there. And there's, there's something about the filmmaking that, that makes these moments feel, I don't like, you're there. It's an intimate moment. We're present there with these characters. And the only thing that I can think of is it's those moments where, and we get them a lot with Tish and Fani is they will be talking to each other, but they're talking to the camera and we get that close up and they're, they're just talking and it feels like they are talking to us. And it creates this, this intimacy that just keeps us drawn into the whole story throughout. But I mean, as I was watching this, I thought I could, pro- am I going to spend the rest of this movie with this family in this living room? Because 
I can go for that. You're going to become part yes, of the family. Exactly. I mean, that's yes. the thing. Yeah. And I, you know, I, 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 I used the wrong word before. I said burdened with white privilege, but I, I, I think it's what I meant is blinded by white privilege, right? And I think that that concept that you're talking about, putting us there with the family, putting us there in the conversations, it allows us to live in this family's shoes. And I think it's, it's just like you said, it's, it's, it's entertaining, it's intense, and it's wonderful. You feel the warmth of the love on one side, and the sort of fear and and sort of judgment on the other side. It's just perfectly, it's it's perfectly expressed the emotion that's that's in right. this. And film. I think it's a very relatable experience of if if you haven't been through this, you you may know somebody that's been through something similar where it's there's a you know an unexpected pregnancy. Okay, and you know Fonny's mom is who is going to raise this you know this baby? And Tish's response is the mother and father. The mother father and the are. father. Exactly. A, exactly. But you know. <sighs> it's just the, the the parents could not be more more different tish's family very you know there's a very much a connection between her parents but fanny's parents that there's of love there's yep. just friction and tension between that and they are just at odds with each other it creates such a great dynamic and and that that's what introduces us to that then we we've got the conflict of okay how is tish gonna how is she gonna survive family right how is the, you know how, we've got a divided family how is she gonna make it through this and then we get you know this sharp cut of okay this is mrs victoria rogers and here is what she claims happens to her and now we get the context of this crime that fanny is arrested for and now we we get our timeline jumping around where we've seen, you know, Trish and Fanny trying to find an apartment, you know, the different moments in their relationship from when they first meet. We we see uh, them together on the street talking that their their first time, you know, really making love and that that beautiful moment there. We get all of those pieces, but then we we understand the the dark cloud that's hanging over the family of we need to get a lawyer. We've got. All of these things going on, and that's where we now see the corruption and bias in the system. And even though they have a, a white attorney, we see that he soon is is blindsided by the corruption as well. That, that this that Fani's yeah. not going to get a fair trial at no, at all. It's impossible and, and, for him. And to we get a fair see trial. all of then the I think the beauty in the structure of the story is we see all of the pieces because we have a, a scene right. where uh, one of Fani's friends that's been out of prison for a little while uh, comes and has has dinner, and there's just long conversations about his experience being in prison. And, in prison. And, and the reason Oof. he was, you know, what he was arrested for, which was, you know, again, does it fit the crime? No, but he's a black man, so this is what's going to happen. And then how even w as, as Fani's alibi, that's not going to work because he's, you know, he was in prison. So how is he, a, you know, a valid alibi? And all of the machinations that go behind the scenes to basically put Fani in prison. And it's not till even later in the film that we actually see the circumstances that are sort of the the trigger point for that. Why does this cop have it out for Fani in the first place? Because uh, Tish tells us this whole convoluted story of, well, this woman was raped here. Fani's arrested in his home, which is, you know, far enough away that he would have had to run a significant distance to, to get there. And how, why is the police officer arresting Fani at home when his beat is blocks away? So many, so many questions. And then we late, you know, late in the film, we see that it, it starts with an altercation is a they're they're shopping and there's some you know white man that's that's hidden on tish and fanny defends his woman and the and a cop's going to intervene uh yeah it's <sighs> yes it's a really hard it, scene it is but it gives us all of the pieces right i mean there's it there's does. there's it not does. a lot to this movie when it comes down to it because it's really the conversations between the characters and to say this is a a dialogue heavy film is, is perhaps an overstatement, but it doesn't feel that way. It, the way it, the scenes are shot, the dialogue, everything moves along. I never, it, at any point felt like I'm checking my watch, you know, where is this going? I'm invested in all of these characters and all of these scenes from the moment this movie begins to its, its final moments, heart, heartbreaking moments at the end, uh, there's so much that works so well in this film. And it's it's just a, a testimony to like great filmmaking. And I struggled to find a film that I could say, this reminds me of. 
because I can't think of anything else that reminds me of this because not just in its subject matter, but in the way it's it's put together, the look and feel of everything, it is very much of its own. Yes, I agree. I think it's unique. I think it's it's a special movie because of that. And I think that um, I can't think of anything that I would compare it to either. That's why I think it is a rec- it's one of those kind of recommendations that you say, oh, you haven't seen this, then it's especially if you care about the subject matter, this is something that you you need to see. You need to understand. Um, why everybody why everybody signed on to do it why why there was such a buzz about it why 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 this movie matters in in terms of the art surrounding the the subject matter well and i think if i if i sort of contrast this with our prior film skin and looking at what it what it oh, yeah. means to to be you know a white man in america and looking at the all the opportunities you know there and how a a mistake made in the past and how um, it's possible to rise above those circumstances and, and sort of reinvent oneself. Whereas here we see what it means to be black in America and never getting a shot, a chance at anything, always being at a disadvantage. Uh, you know, we, we see Fani's, you know, ambitions and th- things that he's working hard for it. And the system is just rigged against them in so many ways, um, around every corner. And for me, the fact that these characters are just so, relatable and easy to connect to um i mean if i contrast with um spike lee who's i would say is an aggressive filmmaker in his in his statements about things and is going to be very in your face about it this is the exact opposite of that it it's it's an easy film to sort of sneak up i think it can sneak up on you to so you get to a point where you think i didn't realize you know, this this movie doesn't tell you the message. It makes you feel the message and and you feel it over the course of the film. You feel the frustration. You feel the futility. You you are transported into the experience of the family in this film. And it's it's really powerful. So we there is one section of the film that I did want to discuss because we get so much from Tish and Fani's point of view. But we do have one of the issues they're trying to resolve is this whole, you know, going to court, what's going to happen with Fani? And we've got to track down this woman who's his, his accuser, basically, who has fled the country. And so Tish's mom, played by uh, Regina King, this is Sharon Rivers, goes out of country to try to find this woman so that she they can bring her back to get her testimony, to get the facts, to find out what exactly is going on. Because the way the legal system seems to be working, and I think Tish expresses it to, to the attorney this way, is, oh, the cop, the police officer gets to dictate what this woman says in court. Basically, right. it's his, his because she's because, gone. She, yeah. because she's gone. So if we can if we can get, um, you know, Mrs. Victoria Rogers, we can get her story. We can find out what she saw, what happened. And of course, she was raped. She does not want to go through this. But it's the one moment where we really don't have Tish or Fani as as we fall follow mom down there. And it, it Oh, and it's more than a moment. Well, I mean it's it's, 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 a, good, well, it's a good chunk of the it's a good chunk of know, the story. Four to seven minutes right. in the film. So it's the one part where I thought, okay, I I felt less grounded, and maybe it's because I felt Tish was our narrator and we she was so present in everything. And at that moment, there's I felt this absence of that as Sharon goes down to, 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 to try to, you know, find the solutions she needs to get, you know, Fani acquitted of all of this. It, it's the one part where I felt, I, and I don't know what the solution is to that. Uh, and that's probably just, just my issue, but I felt very, it felt very disconnected from everything else because we're in a different location. Diff- it felt like the story shifted significantly it did i agree with that but i it's so necessary to the story and i think i think we we have um hypotheses before that scene that the accuser was actually raped and that there's something that whether it's a cover-up or they just needed a patsy to you know close the case or what whatever it is it, they aren't trying to solve that problem what they just need is this woman to, so to actually go and have the experience to to witness what this rape victim is going through and how she just wants to be done and just wants, she never wants to deal with this again. She's heavily traumatized by the event. I think is important to the film. And I think, you know, Sharon is the only person who can do it. And it, it, you know, you look at that, at her 
expression of futility after she cannot convince this woman to do anything more because she's just lost is just so heavy and is so intense. Regina King is, you know, I, I, I loved her before this film, but how does it's so deserving of the Oscar for this performance. She's wonderful. In it. Yeah, because we've got two women. I mean, that scene is so powerful because we've got two women. We've got, you know, Sharon, who is at her wits end to do whatever it is in her power to do something to help her daughter out, to help her to save her son-in-law uh, versus Victoria, who is so done with everything and just wants to leave all that behind. They're just both emotional wrecks at the end of that scene. And it's just this, this hopelessness that they're both separately yeah. losing yes, their exactly losing their religion yes. about yes, the world exactly yeah. and su and such trauma in their lives that that is entwined with each other and there's no way for for one to resolve their issue without the other and it's just yes it, it, i mean it is it is essential it, i just it really stood out for me because we and i know it's coming because we get this we get the great montage of uh of the two dads of like how are we going to get all this money for the continued you know legal you know expenses that they have and it just they get they get their side hustle going and all of, all of that of what can we do to to raise this money and again it's just everything works so well in this film i don't you know i yeah. don't know what more to say that's about why, it. that's yeah. why i i think yeah. I, I i i appreciate you bringing it up as a quibble but the reality for me is it it, it was necessary is because how i looked at it it's a necessary element so I, I i didn't have a problem with it at all and i you know you could have the entire movie just regina king yeah, would be yes. super happy about that so <laughs> yeah that's awesome yes uh, so i do want to talk about cinematography in here because there's there's so many pieces to this where I feel like this is one of those films where there are moments I can just screen capture, pause, and just put that on my wall. Uh, there's so many moments in this. And I, you know, how to capture sort of the the gritty, you know, city in the 70s, but still somehow to make this warm and inviting as a strike, you know, <laughs> the striking contrast between the two of how do I get the sense of like, yeah, they're they're in the city and things are it's not necessarily a clean place all the time as we see when they go looking for, you know, when they're apartment hunting and they've we've got a scene with uh, Dave Franco is sort of the the landlord of the, the building that's being converted uh, and all of that. And it's like, yeah, this is not it's not a great neighborhood to be in, but still everything. And it, the only thing that I I as I watched this, I thought. I guess that's sort of the the eyes that the Fani and Tish see things through, I guess when you're in love that, you know, yeah, no matter how ugly things are, you can still find the beauty in those moments. And the film seems to have that just laid across it as because this is their story, despite how bad things may get, how tiny their apartment may be or how gritty it is in the neighborhood, there's still this just warmth and love yeah. and, and softness. softness. To That's this, the thing. Yeah. It's so interesting. Yeah. Like it does. The film doesn't fail in showing the grit. The film shows the grit. But I love your interpretation there of saying that it's we're seeing it through the the loving eyes, the loving lens of Tish and Fanny's relationship in this. That yes, they're in this nasty neighborhood, this gritty part of town. But they feel the love. They feel the softness. They feel the warmth. I think that's totally because there's true. so many things that are ugly about the seventies. To clothing you know all of that and, <laughs> in, in general. general and i just thought <laughs> there it doesn't come across that way uh you know and no. that was the thing that it was a, it truly a beautiful. marvel for me yes exactly and they I, I mean he did this thing where he's bringing these bright colors and he's matching the you know in what they're doing but they're these bright colors and they don't strike you they actually sort of bec you become part of it like that you you mentioned the cinematography the opening shot is this great uh you know sort of this overhead view as they're walking down the stairs it goes from showing you them and having this conversation to this god's eye view that rotates above them as they wind their way down the stairs and then comes back to that sort of that two shot thing that you were talking about in their dialogue where they're speaking to you you as if you're the person in the, in the in the in the conversation and it was so well done it's impossible to not be uh it, to not be aware of what the filmmaking is doing to make you a part of the story what, as you're watching it it's it's really really special all the way throughout and so that that brings me to the you know culmination of our story and again if i look at and 
I, I, it wasn't as much of an emotional roller coaster. And I guess that I, that's the other thing that it didn't go for like the melodrama of like, it's jerking me around emotionally. I did. I didn't feel emotionally manipulated. And I think that's maybe another one of the strengths of the, the score is that it conveys mood without being emotionally manipulative because we, I mean, we end with Tish telling us that, you know, basically what funny had to do is he just, you know, had to, okay, yeah, I'm going to, you know, take a plea on this. And so he's, he's doing time and we see Tish and their son, who's got to be at this point, four, five years old, maybe, Yeah, you know, he's older. older. So yeah. to, to visit Bonnie. So, okay. We, we know the trial's coming up. So he's been in prison for several years at this point. We don't know when he's, you know, th th I guess that's the, that's where the story ends is that family moment. And for me, that was the most powerful commentary of the story of this family, of these two young kids falling in love with each other. They've known each other since they were really young kids and, and sort of discovering this relationship and, and the birth of their child and all of that. And the, the happy little family moment we have is like in the visiting room in the prison, that's, that's their normal, you know, and that's, and their, that's life. their life. Yeah. And it struck me as, I guess the irony of that, of, yes, this is, this is what they're content with. This is what, this is how they're surviving. And to look at that and say, that is so wrong. There are so many things wrong with this, that that is what this family has to accept as, as their normal, as, as, you know, their dreams being put on hold. This is, this is their reality now. And for me, it was, that was like the gut punch that I didn't expect yeah, it it reminds me. So I just watched the. It's really controversial. The new uh, Dave Chappelle oh, okay. uh, Netflix special called The Closer, and he and he equates a bunch of things in it. And you know, there's a lot of controversy about how he talks about uh, the transsexual community and and things like this, the transgender community. But one thing he talks about it in sort of the emotional climax in it, of it is, I don't need your apology. I just need you to acknowledge that I am living. This is my human experience. This is my this is what I'm this is that I am a human and I am going through this. And that's what I feel like this movie yes. does. Yeah. It ends with that scene in there. And it says, you know, it says to to people who haven't experienced it, to people who who, who don't know it, we uh, don't need you to. Uh, to do anything, just see that I'm human and that this is my normal and this is what has become my normal because of the way the world is. And it's so powerful and it's so appropriate. And you you mentioned manipulation before too. I you're right. This movie doesn't manipulate you. It 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 is this subtle delivery of artful emotion. And you feel it through it. It's appropriate the way that the score takes you through. It's appropriate the way that the story brings you through. It's 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 about delivering the difficult emotions of normalcy, the difficult nature of being human in this experience. And I just I think it's it's a really, really special movie because of all of that. Go, go watch, go See watch it. this movie. Go, go, go grab a it. friend. Go sit down and if watch you missed this. It, we missed yes. it. We I you know, I, I should have seen it. There's no reason why I missed it. And and everybody should go out and see it. We need more of those IMDb people to go out and rate it. There should be as many reviews on IMDb as there are on Letterboxd for right. sure. And I and I again, I think for me, the revelation was that I was anticipating a more pol overtly political movie. Um, oh, that, okay. you know, that's, you know, what I was ex expecting. It was a, you know, very didactic in my face. We're gonna, I'm going to show you how tough it is to be black in America. And these are the things and was just, I mean, with, with the old axiom, you, you, you attract more, you know, more bees with honey or whatever. Right. I mean, that's the, you know, spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down, if you will, as, as well, because it, it, it is, is so easy to just, you can, you can start watching this movie and you're going to be pulled in. And then you're going to be along for the two hour ride on this and you're not going to feel that this, you know, unlike, you know, skin, the previous one where I'd say that's that's a tough watch. That's assignment, you know, viewing because there's something important you need to learn from watching this movie. And it's going to tell you what that is and it's going to drag you through the ugly to, to make its point. This is the exact opposite end of the spectrum on that because you will still get an understanding, but it's going to be so much more. Experience. experience. Yes. You're going to experience yes. it. Yes. You don't, it, it doesn't beat you up in the right. face and say, you have to right. learn this. It says, step into my shoes and experience it with yes. me. And that is a beautiful thing yes. to do with a, film. A, as an it, it is. And again, I, there's, there's just so many beautiful moments. 
this film visually, musically, all of that. I just go watch this movie. Stop this podcast. Go watch it this weekend. I don't care. This for me, you know, we're recording this in October. This is one that I would say, oh, when you're getting together with family on Thanksgiving, put this on because this is something that everybody can can sit down and watch and you're not going to get into a lot of fights about it. You're going to, because you can basically talk about it at its most fundamental and human level. That This is about experience of this young couple. And so you can delve into the polit- as political as you want on this, or you can just really talk about this as what does this mean for families and how we need to, you know, rally around each other to support our kids, all of those things. I mean, there's and how to be thankful for what yes, we have. Exactly. Yeah. So it's, many things. It's tough. Oh, okay. Well, JJ, we've got one more coming up and then we're done. We're okay. Done, we're we're oh, done okay. for this season. We're, we're going to be talking about okay. Antebellum, which is also available to stream on Hulu. Another look at sort of racism in America. So I had a deep sigh, not because of the racism part, but I've heard that it's scary. So, so I'm, I'm getting prepared <laughs> to sort of hide under the covers a little bit with so this we'll, one. we'll see how how dark this one gets but this will be yes i we're sort of it, it's been a heavy season i will admit that and so we're we're ending on really an exploration of racism in america and looking at it from different perspectives from you know a, a, a true story in skin to uh an adaptation of a novel to i don't know exactly what antebellum is going to bring for us but i know it's got a whole hodgepodge of things going on so we'll see what we what we have to say, what that film has to say, and how it may align with or oppose, you know, these other two films, we will find out. All right. Well, I want to thank all our listeners for for listening to Trailer Rewind, helping us get through this season and helping JJ make it through a, a, a season of challenging films <laughs> as, as well. And we will be talking to you next time about Antebellum on Hulu. See you soon. Hondo.